unfortunately we have a, a slew of pulses inbound. Um, so that activity you're seeing with the sun is about to escalate. I, I would say as far as its activity right now, it's been mild. Uh, it will not be mild when, uh, you know, as, as conditions begin to form uh, around the sun now. And, and that's, <clears throat> of course, it's, these things are out of the ordinary, yes, but, but still in the rating of what's coming, you can call that mild. Um, and it won't be mild for long. In fact, um, part of the buildup, uh, part of the elusiveness of this buildup is that uh, all of a sudden we have activity and then it goes back to quiet. People tend to lose focus and then wham, everything happens again. Um, which is why, you know, but that's why shows like this are important to keep people in mind about these things so they won't be taken by surprise. There are too many people out there in the world frightened. They're scared, <clears throat> to be frank with you, of what's uh, happening in the world. They are becoming extremely uh, fearful. And, but, it's a good thing to know that uh, somebody in the body of Christ has information regarding these things that are coming. Um, but the sun is really about to escalate in its activities, big time. Um, and now we are about to begin to see celestial objects that no one ever discussed before. So, uh, you know, this season that we're in, um, very strange objects objects showing up that nobody has tracked. Are you are you um, talking about now? Are, are you saying sort of like when we had that big uh, interstellar uh, whatever that was that went racing through? Are you saying that kind of activity or, or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, that kind. Of, like like for for example, for for example, um, say around eleven p.m. at night, right when you know time of the night when the show ends and all of a sudden it turns daytime outside for about and it stays like that uh until morning you know things like that um right. they'd be hard pressed to give everybody a good explanation what? only to turn around and then we have in the middle of the day the sun is gone nobody can see the sun they don't know where it is or anything wait so a minute have celestial happenings like that you're saying like let's say it could be midnight or so you got a dark nice starry night the stars are out and then all of a sudden, you're saying it's just going to like turn like like twilight or something, just light? No, daylight. Absolutely daylight? Daylight, like you Florida sunshine he daylight. Can't. No, no, he can't, Mike. How? How can that happen? As part of the nature of some of these drastic celestial changes we're about to see that nobody's able to hide. And they're going to be hard-pressed to explain this away. I would suggest that people really... Uh, understand what has to come into motion for this to take place. They will begin to talk about a second sun. You're going to hear that more and more. I'm telling you, Pastor Paul, everything we have and, and your experts that have been on this show, what has been discussed, uh, scientists are now having to come out and explain it. And, and folks are going to twist everything towards an agenda. So don't expect them to, because they're not, these folks are not spiritual. They're not. Uh, they hate spiritual language. And they're going to explain things based upon Darwin's theory of evolution, which is a progressive uh, state of things. Uh, don't believe that, because what we're facing is drastic. And um, but, but never never think that God's hand is not played. In, in fact, uh, that's going to become painfully obvious to a lot of people that what they have seen is not covered in physics. It's physically impossible. Uh, the forces won't permit it. And they're not going to be able to explain things after a given time. But um, we're about to face some very strange celestial so, uh, happenings. So, Mike, I guess I should settle myself down for a minute and just remember what Jesus said. That Jesus said in Matthew er, in Luke 21, he said this. And great, okay, he talks about nation and against nation stuff. He says in verse 10, or verse 11, he says, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines... And pestilences like locusts and plagues, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Is that what you're saying we're going to see? That's right, big time. Yeah. The nature of such is so pastor is so um, the nature of which will scare uh, the best of us. It, I, I tell you what, it's it's one thing to discuss it; it's another matter to see it. It, it gives you a different feeling. It feels like it does not belong. Uh, so 
that's going to be a time for people to really gauge themselves as far as their flesh and spirit is. So people concerned. are going to be, yeah, people's going to be caught off guard because you know when, if oh, I yeah. read this, I can just read it and says great signs and fearful sights should be in the heavens. So just keep on reading. But you wait till the the sun lights up the night, or it goes dark in the day, and people are going to freak completely out. And if they don't know this is in the Bible, they won't know what's going on. I'm going to first thing I'm going to do when this happens is say, well, Mike said it. And the second thing I'm going to say is the Bible said it first. The Bible said it, didn't it, Mike? Absolutely. And and you know what, Pastor Paul, in in fact, speaking about the sun and the solar flare, something is happening in our oceans. And there's a there's a problem. If we get time, I'll state that problem. But uh, the the ocean floor is magnetizing. It really is magnetizing. The sun's activity is increasing, and just about everybody's about to notice a different star in our southern uh, hemisphere. They won't be able to hide this either. Uh, The tail of which will point straight down. It's not going to point to the left or to the right. It's going to point straight down. Um, So that's going to be strange within itself because normally you don't see uh, any type of celestial activity coming to our solar system with the tail pointed straight down. You don't see that, which... Uh, should give everybody a clue about a uh, it'll match a specific chart that you have it'll match it and um, that will give other folks some uh, extra additional information right some some evidence behind uh, um, a very strange force that follows the orbit of our sun um, which by the way is on that chart so when those days come past Paul given the magnetism of our ocean solar flares we're going to cook some of our ocean. That's going to be a big problem. Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, it's going to kill a lot of the uh, marine life, but isn't going to, it's going to, it's going to create a weather patterns. That's going to be unprecedented, right? Yeah. And, and also it's see when a solar flare, when any kind of, um, right now we have solar winds hitting the earth, not from a flare, right? We're, we're not talking about flares. Just imagine there are no flares on the sun, no CMEs, just solar winds. Every day, our magnetosphere redirects those solar winds to the poles, and the Earth absorbs them. It recharges, so to speak. Well, in this case, it's overcharging. So imagine that changes. Imagine all of that radiation pulled towards the oceans, right? That's what's about to happen. Oh, so you're saying the oceans – so you're saying – now I'm starting to get it. But you're saying the ocean's going to magnetize, and it's going to draw things toward the ocean. Metals. That's right. That's right. It, it'll take the radiation. It'll disrupt the magnetosphere. The pole lines of force in the magnetosphere will be different. They will go toward the, the ocean. Wherever they concentrate, every living thing in that part of the ocean is going to be cooked. Every living thing. Uh, so in, in all ships, they're going to have to... They're going to have to quarantine or, or certainly set up barriers to certain places. This is something. They're going to they're gonna track likely... To be honest with you, it's going to it's going to cause issues at sea with uh, certain countries because it's very difficult to find out exactly where it's going to be in the oceans. But the oceans are magnetizing. The Earth keeps um, it, it's just pulling out metals left and right. The more magma moves, the more we have a magnetic force on the ocean floors. So much so it's disrupting parts of the poles sporadically right now. That will continue to increase because of magma. The the movement of magma is also increasing. So it's almost like this chain reaction that nobody can stop. Uh, So that force will be redirected and it won't stay in one spot forever. It's going to move around, and wherever it hits the concentration of the of the solar winds, uh, it, it'll be different because it will, we won't have the protection uh, that we normally have, where it goes straight into the earth, into the poles, which are somewhat fortified against that. They naturally um, process all that radiation, but the ocean can't handle that, right? It's like hitting an egg on the side versus the tips. So uh, where the oceans are, points of weakness for the earth. And uh, radiation, when it hits those spots, fish will be cooked. Uh, I, you know what? I would go so far as to say because during those times, that, that's only that could honestly that could be, you know, no less than a month away. And um, whoa, people out there starving. And I guarantee you, uh, when it cooks those fish, people are going to read about other folks eating those fish. You're saying we might be about a month away from the fish in the ocean being cooked, and people will, yeah, because people are so. Huh? We're not far away from that at all. 